Did you know that student debt has reached unimaginable levels, leaving millions drowning in financial stress? It's time to expose the truth behind the education industrial complex and the role student loans play in perpetuating this cycle of poverty. We're going to delve into the historical context, uncovering pivotal moments where decisions made by policymakers and financial institutions set the stage for this predatory system. Education is often portrayed as a means to secure a job, uplift families from poverty, and become valuable members of society. However, let's delve into the reality behind the cost of education. Consider a student from Louisiana attending university, with college tuition after scholarship aid amounting to $104,000, on-campus accommodation costing $47,000, and an additional $7,000 for books and supplies. The total revenue over four years reaches a staggering $159,340. This is a price tag for one American to obtain a respectable college education. But that's not all. Many students and their families can't afford this hefty sum, resulting in student loans. Before the pandemic, a student loan with a 5% interest rate would accumulate an additional $43,000 in pure interest over 10 years. From just one customer, the lifetime value of a student can expect $200,000. These figures shed light on the financial burden and long-term implications of pursuing higher education. Did you know that over 44 million Americans are burdened with a staggering $1.6 trillion in student debt? That's equivalent to the entire economy of Canada. It's time we unveil the true nature of higher education. Education isn't solely about preparing you for life. It's about money. Opportunities for profit abound, and anyone who denies it is either part of the system or uninformed. It hasn't always been this way, though. Universities used to be affordable and reasonable. But now, they've transformed into a profitable industry, churning out compliant debt slaves. Welcome to the education industrial complex. But here's the good news. College is no longer the only path to financial success. More and more people are realizing that all you need is an internet connection and a thirst for knowledge. However, the landscape of education and success has undergone a dramatic transformation since these Cold War days. Today, we have exciting alternatives that challenge the traditional notion of college as the sole path to financial prosperity. The rise of the internet and digital technologies has empowered individuals like never before, enabling them to acquire knowledge, develop skills, and forge their own paths to success. In the next video, we will explore the empowering possibilities of online education and how it is reshaping the future for new generations. On October 4, 1957, the Soviet Union shocked the world by launching Sputnik 1 the first man-made satellite in space. This huge event sparked concerns in the United States about Soviet capabilities as it indicated the potential for them to launch a nuclear bomb. The race to outsmart and outperform the Soviets was on. Senate Majority Leader Lyndon B. Johnson recognized the importance of higher education in winning this battle. He believed that America needed a large number of college graduates to stay ahead. However, the cost of tuition, though much lower than today, was still a barrier for many. Student loan programs were highly selective at the time. Johnson took his case to Congress, emphasizing that college graduates earned significantly more over their lifetimes compared to non-graduates. He argued that providing student loans would enable graduates to easily repay them. This proposal was framed as a means of defeating the Soviets and promoting national security. The government was persuaded, and in September 1957, President Eisenhower signed the National Defense Education Act into law. The act established the National Defense Student Loan Program, combining the buzzword of national security and education. It began by offering eligible students loans of up to $1,000 per year, covering tuition costs. The historical background sheds light on the interplay between education, national security, and the motivations behind the establishment of student loan programs. It highlights the influential role that events and politics can play in shaping the trajectory of education and the economy. The U.S. government saw an opportunity to expand the student loan program and provide significant funding to colleges and universities. Congress repeatedly voted to allocate more money to meet the growing demands for loans. People were paying off their loans, gaining higher education, and the U.S. was making strides in surpassing the Soviets. While Lyndon B. Johnson became president, he further championed the American dream, desiring equal opportunities for everyone to achieve it. By the mid-1960s, federal spending on student loans exceeded $100 billion for the first time ever. President Johnson aimed to expand the program even further. However, Congress grew concerned about the large sums of money being dispersed without immediate repayment. It took several years for borrowers to start repaying, and the repayments were spread out over an extended period. 
To address this, President Johnson sought assistance from banks, unknowingly setting the stage for one of the most detrimental debt traps in history, the modern student loan system. In 1965, Congress passed the Higher Education Act, which formed the basis for the current system. It included scholarships and grants for low-income students and guaranteed loans for middle-class students. A guarantee agency was established to ensure that banks continued lending. Under this arrangement, banks provided student loans and the government gave the guarantee agency 80% of the borrowed amount. If a student defaulted, the guarantee agency fully reimbursed the bank for the lost money and the interest they would have earned. The standard repayment rate for student loans was set at 6%. While students were still studying and not earning money, the government would cover the interest payments to the banks. However, after nine months of graduation, the responsibility shifted to the students to repay their loans. By the 1960s, colleges were raising tuition by 30% above the inflation rate. This negative feedback loop spiraled further. Colleges expanded, becoming massive institutions with multiple campuses and well-paid professors. They had the freedom to charge exorbitant tuition fees, while the government subsidized the money, and students and parents were undeterred because they could secure loans. To address the need for additional funding, Sally Bay was created in 1972. Banks no longer had enough money to lend to students, and the government wanted to sustain the education momentum. Sally Mae served as the intermediary purchasing student loans from the banks and profiting from the repayments made by students. Tuition at private colleges more than doubled between 1969 and 1975, lending to an influx of college graduates competing for limited job opportunities. Consequently, thousands of students defaulted on their loans as they struggled to find well-paying jobs. The student loan system faced worsening issues as more students defaulted, aggravating an already problematic situation. Under the Clinton administration, the federal government began providing student loans directly, posing a threat to Sally May. However, when Republicans took power in 1994, Sally May was privatized, allowing it to offer larger loans at higher interest rates and become highly profitable. The combination of private and government loans enabled colleges to raise tuition prices without constraints, leading to the establishment of the student loan trap in its final form. By the 2000s, annual tuition costs had skyrocketed to around $20,000, marking a 13-fold increase compared to previous years. The competition between Sally May and federal student loans intensified, with Sally May employing various tactics to gain an advantage. They paid college loan officers to promote Sally May as the best loan provider, placed their employees in college call centers to deceive students, and even sponsored lavish trips for college financial advisors. Meanwhile, the federal government struggled to keep pace. In 2001, when George Bush assumed the presidency, he further reduced government student loans, making Sally May's position even more advantageous. As the story unfolds, it's worth noting that the narrator graduated with degrees in aerospace engineering in 1999, likely experiencing firsthand the impact of these changes in the student loan landscape. Under President Obama's administration in 2009, efforts to combat the financial crisis inadvertently played into the hands of companies like Sally May, encouraging widespread college attendance, even for just a year, resulted in Sally May ensnaring students in a cycle of debt. Despite Obama's attempt to alleviate the burden with income-based loan payments, it only facilitated more debt accumulation and increased tuition prices. As a consequence, student debt soared to $1 trillion by 2012. Universities shifted their focus from education to amenities, competing based on campus size, superfluous degrees, sports teams, and extravagant features, prioritizing recreational experiences over traditional learning. The education industrial complex is a concerning system where universities, politicians, and bankers benefit the most. Unlike other dubious businesses, higher education receives unwavering support from American culture, including parents. What started as an initiative for increased accessibility has led to a shocking 3,000% rise in cost, leaving an entire generation trapped in debt slavery. Nearly half of loan recipients failed to graduate within six years, and the burden of $1.5 trillion in federal student loan debt falls on American students, resulting in losses for taxpayers. Regrettably, wealthy colleges emerge as the true winners, enjoying substantial profits. And that concludes our eye-opening exploration into the dark realities of our education system. We hope this video has ignited a spark within you to question the status quo and seek change. Remember, knowledge is power, and by understanding the insidious nature of student loans, we can work together to break free from this cycle of debt and pave the way for a brighter future. Together, we can dismantle the scam and empower new generations to thrive. Thanks for watching, and until next time, stay informed and stay inspired. That's all for today. Thanks for joining us. Don't forget to like and turn on the notification bell for more eye-opening videos. We'll see you in the next one. Bye.